Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there in FAF land. I am going to put out a single cast today. Um, I do apologize in advance if my voice cracks up or I cough in your ear or I miss something. I'm kind of casting in a fog today, fighting off a bit of sickness. But I will go ahead and knock out a cast just to keep you guys entertained. And uh, hopefully this will be a good game. This was sent in to me. It is a very, very high ranking two versus two. This is the highest ranked game I've seen in a very long time. We have uh, Bellacor and Blodier on the north. That is a 21 and a 2000. And then on the southern side, we have Mr. Smith and Zlow. That is a 2K and a 2300. I'm sure all of you guys have seen these players before. Bellacor renaming his ACU to Jade. That is great. All right. I'm going to bump the speed up on this a bit. This is liable to be a long game considering the map size. And we will see where this takes us. I'll try to catch the initial build orders. Slow. Going for early air. He is rushing directly to the Hydro to build. He is UEF. Uh, another push towards the Hydro, but spamming the ever-living daylights out of power. Mr. Smith as Cybern, but he is going to do his manual reclaim on the rocks. On the northern side, we have Bellicor. He is going early air as well. Rushed the Hydro and waiting to fill in his mass extractors. Air factory already up for Bloatier. Massive power spam here at the start. Has already reclaimed his rocks. And uh, that is a pretty normal sentence build. Early bomber out. That is ridiculously early. He is going for some harassment on the other side of the map. And it looks like the beach players are taking front. You got transports out. Pretty symmetrical gameplay. That's what this bomber was for. He is headed in to murder those engineers. Decent little bit of micro there, but it was all for naught. There are interceptors down there, and they are going to nail that bomber. Land factories in production for both sides. It looks like Bellacor got a slight little head start on it, and he did take the time to push an engineer over here and start reclaiming Salem's on the other side just to get a head start on that mass and deny it. Zlow is taking the direct route all the way to the front to try and take the neck while Bellacor is pushing to the front base here. Uh, that is a renaming mod. That is exactly what that is. Uh, Bellacor is pushing to the front here to secure the mass extractors and to start base building on what would have been the front player's spawn were this a normal game. Double ACU push. Uh, Mr. Smith is also headed towards the front with his ACU. Looks like that is going to be an aggressive push. All right, the beach player, Zlow, is taking far more than half of the mass extractors here. But that is okay. It is a team game, and they will help each other out. By the same token, Bloodier, his opponent, is taking more than half the mass extractors on the northern side, so it will stay pretty even. Despite Bellacor's early start down here in mid, this double ACU is going to get the southern team so much reclaim. So much reclaim. Um, that not only what's left of the T3 Rex and such, but also all of those T1 units that were killed off there. Two ACUs is definitely a force to be reckoned with. Very early naval aggression down here for Blodier. He's already got three, four la uh, naval factories up. Not even a single factory down here, and there is already a frigate out. He's also pushed a jester across just to try and deny Navy. Zlow and Mr. Smith, it looks like they're putting all of their money on this gamble. They are pushing directly into the production of Bellacor. They're going to try to force him off the neck as quickly as they possibly can. Love to see little drops like that. Excellent push there. And Navy is going to be a problem now. That Jester, awesome, awesome rating. 
those frigates are gonna have to do something about that build power otherwise that Navy denial is not gonna work all right preventative AA turret here looks like Mr. Smith is T2 air he was the first to make it there and he is pushing a whole lot of gunships he is firmly in control of the air on the northern half of this map and he is going to take full advantage of that with those gunships massive point defense spam now for Bellacore he is going to try and keep that double ACU push away he is also building T2 point defense for some area denial T2 naval factory for Blodier that is an excellent push for Cyber and classic Navy play UEF tier 2 is so weak versus Cyber tier 2 that is a pretty much hopeless situation for Zlow unless unless Mr. Smith can help him out with some torpedo bombers they do have air control by a slim margin so if they were able to get some torpedo bombers down there and kill off nope there's the cruiser second by the books cyber and aggressive play that cruiser is going to help deny any torpedo or otherwise bombers that might come in those tanks made it a very long ways although they really didn't kill much if anything I don't think they did and more engineers dropping for Delacour this is going to be a devastating loss for Zlow that was most of his two, tech 2 mexes I believe nope he is pushing pretty hard on tech 2 so he does have this in the back here but those Salem's are going to become a major problem if that is not solved alright gameplay is still looking like a clone um, on the northern side the rock player has denied beach navy and there are cyber destroyers on the shore although for this one that was from the home territory there was not a naval push on the southern side same story tech 2 cyber navy has pushed the uef player out of the water completely and it is now going to town on that eco the neck is firmly in the hands of Zlow. Pardon me, having to shut off the mic and cough. Um, not sure what Zlow is doing here. He's going T2 Navy in the northern pond. Um, not exactly sure what the point of that is he is building riptides love to see hover units as a recovery from uh, getting forced out of the water with a good bit of micro those will actually be able to do a whole lot of damage to the Salem's the slow projectile rate does allow for pretty solid dodging although I think Zlow may experience technical difficulties at some point because his T2 HQ is on the front lines. Blodier would be wise to take that out. He is going to run. Never turn your back with Cyber Navy. Ah, he sees the hover tanks that have skirted around. Excellent move by Zlow. He is going to push all the way around the outside and try to kill off as much of that build power as he can. Riptide sweeping in and demolishing those engineers. And that will draw away the Salem's from his front base and allow him a little time to recover. Bellacor was able to successfully get some engineers up here, and he is going to start Navy immediately, producing engineers out of a couple of factories and then turning to frigate spam with the others cruisers that is why he is in the northern navy uef cruisers able to stab inwards quite a distance and also that will make up for the sirens lack of anti-air those terrible cruisers um, pretty much worthless for aa once you hit the t3 stage on the southern side 
Blodir is in firm control of the water, but he is having to take care and spend APM on maintaining it due to that hover spam. All right, Blodir and Bellicor working together to try and secure Navy up here. That was spotted by Mr. Smith, and he's now pushing, trying to get some naval units up there to deny, but he is not going to have enough. He stopped Navy production in order to hit T3 with this naval factory and turn out a plan B. That is going to have incredibly long-reaching TAC missiles, which actually do a fairly good amount of damage. And then, of course, building a nuke. It is 23 minutes. Time to break out the T4 Eco and the nuke launchers. After all, this is Settens. What would Settens be without a nuke launcher to? <laughs> And this is what you do not want to do. Blodier doing ex or yes, Blodier doing exactly what you should not. Streaming torpedo bombers into a cruiser that is underneath a shield. That is just about as pointless a thing as you could ever do. Basically feeding vet to it. It's always hilarious to me the absolute swarms of interceptors that are built on a big map like this before the move to the T3 stage when you don't have a dedicated air player. Is that? Yes, it is. Zlow has also made it to T3 air. Looks like everyone is, but he has got a strap bomber. Take that back. Bellacor does not have a T3 air factory, but he will soon, it looks like. That strap bomber is going to die a horrible death very quickly, but it did manage to get one T2 mass extractor. I don't think that's worth the mass, but at least you got something to show for it. You didn't just throw it in to die and not kill anything. On the northern side, the frigate spam is strong with this one, but uh, I don't think it will be enough versus that combined navy. Riptides pushing northwards, low deciding that naval control is more important on the top than pressuring the southern side. I don't know whether that's going to come back to bite them, though, because there are an awful lot of Salems down here, and they are about to start putting a hurt down on this over here. Riptides apparently get bored. <laughs> They're just going to sit there and twiddle their thumbs as the time passes, despite the fact that there are no other combat units anywhere near there. And they could potentially take out a T3 mass extractor before they're stopped. Definitely would be worth the mass. Broadswords! The Harbinger of Doom in the T3 skies. Great little gunship, the Broadsword. It is going to go to town on those engineers down there. Blodier contemplating going after it, but decides he has better things to do, and he is going to pull his ASF back. Sad that those riptides were not utilized. Dying a pointless death. And the Navy has crossed the neck. <laughs> that is hilarious. Diving straight into the water next to these factories. Zlow throwing up shields as quickly as he can and trying to cover with a broadsword and a couple of cruisers. Cruisers, of course, not being very effective due to the fact that their missiles do not track. But he is trying anyway and is actually successful thanks to those awesome T3 naval or T2 naval shields for the UEF. Frigate spam for the win. Cybern frigates undoubtedly the strongest frigate there is, and they are going to handily beat down all of those riptides and put a hurt ding on that destroyer. Although it did not quite die, but if it hangs around for much longer, it will. So many Corsairs. Why are you doing this, Bellacor? Not sure what you're trying to accomplish against a shielded 
heavy cruiser mix, but uh, all the more power to you for trying, but Southern team still managing to stave off this Navy slow dropping engineers back out here and throwing down factories as fast as he can. Probably going to try to get some frigate spam up, do the same thing as Bellicor is on the northern side. Yes, frigates to supplement the hover spam. And he is nailing a ton of reclaim. Sorry guys, my brain is floating away and I am just sitting here absent-mindedly zooming. I do apologize. <laughs> I am definitely going to take a nap after this. Ignore the temporary desync. I should have gotten the desync phone mod. I forgot to do that. The, uh, the nuke, for some reason, has a tendency to desync that was an awesome nuke. <laughs> I love it. Point blank plan B to effectively kill off half of the northern team. Better th Yes. Honestly, that may be better than half because in one stroke that secured the northern navy. Bloodier is going to stay in and fight it out, but that was a huge hit to take. He is now going to have to work on securing this map, and that is going to give the southern team an opportunity to get a beachhead over here and start actually fighting a land battle across here. And Strats coming in on the southern side. What is he headed for? T3P gens. I so wish you had ground fired in between those, even though you didn't kill them anyway. That would have been really nice to see. Okay, back to what I was saying. Um, the nuke emblem. I am not sure what exactly causes it, but I have been informed by a couple of reliable sources that in replays, the strategic nuke emblem will actually cause a desync, even though nothing in the game is affected. So... This game from the original person I don't think had a desync and uh, there was a surprise outcome. I know that nuke was supposed to happen so I believe this game is still correct to the replay even though there was a desync. And to those of you who have informed me, I have just completely forgotten to get the new desync or the uh, desync clone mod. I will be doing that so I can get rid of that nagging window. Bloodier actually doing an impressive job of trying to secure this over here. He has set up a massive loyalist spam down here. <laughs> Getting some units out. So far there is only T1 on the ground over here, so the loyalist should have an easy time dealing with it. And he is still managing to hold on to naval control down here, even if it is just by a hair. He does have a Soul Ripper out, though, and a significant, <clears throat> a significant amount of air. Although on the northern side, there is also a Soul Ripper. Once again, symmetrical gameplay. <laughs> Soul Ripper at the same time for both teams. Although I do think Blue Deer is going to have a hand up in air. It looks like he has at least as many if not more ASF than both of the southern players combined and it looks like that soul ripper in the north is going to make a move while all of the air is distracted and there is another nuke launch that plan B definitely paying for itself oh that's going to hurt so much build power so many so many power generators that is about the best nuke that you could possibly ask for. Soul Ripper is dead. Air is lost. That was an excellent try for a rally by Bloodier, but I don't think that he is going to make it out of this. He does have another Soul Ripper up. I hate you, desync window. Go away and leave me alone.
Harvey, not Harvey's Loyalists finally making it to the beach here. And the T2 Shields doing their job of denying what you want to do. Oh, so annoying, those units. Let's see if this other bug makes any headway on the southern side. It is going to successfully take out the naval factories down there. So, naval control will once again be firmly in the hands of Blowdeer on the southern side, and maybe he will be able to push out some more Salems, although all of this hover spam is going to mess him up. And the Ripper has successfully killed Blowdeer. <laughs> Very good try at rallying. I love the effort put into this game, and it was a very solidly played game. But unfortunately, when you lose a player to a point-blank nuke in a 2v2, that is almost an unwinnable situation. So uh, I, I am always happy when people don't rage quit immediately and play it out. And that was a very good try at recovering, but it was not meant to be. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching, and again, there is no need to comment on the fact that I need the desync pwn mod because I'm going right now to go download it. Alright, now for the end announcements, I am officially out of replays. I need some people to supply me with some before tomorrow so that I have something to cast. If you want me to cast an episode of Another One Bites the Dust with you in it, you need to send me a replay of you losing a game. I will critique it. I will try to point out how you could have won it, and hopefully everyone can learn from it. If you want to donate a speed run to me, uh, by all means do so. Please make it exciting. Please don't give me a turtle war. I hate those. <laughs> make it fun for people, and I would be more than happy to cast your game. All right, guys, that is going to wrap it up for me. I am going to go take some drugs and go to sleep the good kind of drugs, I guarantee you. <laughs> and uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks again for watching.